We're not here today to bash someone else's mother. No, no. Our hope is to point to the beauty of our mother. There's no godliness except from God. Mm. The non Castedonian church specifically was to say, hold on, we're uncomfortable with this. Mm. Disregarding that or talking about anything with that being not foundational is, is the epitome of absurdity. Mm. Mm. Please don't do that. Don't tell somebody what they believe. Mm. If you want to know what a group of believers genuinely believe, ask them. Because like, like Father Anthony mentioned, what we do see is we do see saints and they're, they're virtuous saints and the depth and the richness is there. There's been a beautiful dialogue that has been taking place, but challenges remain. Mm -hmm. Father Anthony, you mentioned that there are numerous scholars, theologians from both the Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox that have been discussing this topic for many decades. And so I'd like to turn just to a short segment by Christine Cheo, who has been uh, at the forefront of this. And in fact, she was in the halls of that first uh, or one of the first uh, ecumenical gatherings in Switzerland, I believe it was. And so I, she's going to speak a little bit here about the differences. Are they truly theological or purely semantics, as some people might say? Uh, and love your reactions to her video. So are there differences that are truly theological, or is this, as some have said, uh, no, it's really just a matter of semantics? Well, I would say that semantics implies vocabulary and words which played a role for the theological terminology produced at Chalcedon. At Chalcedon, to speak of Christ being God as well as man, they used a new terminology speaking of two natures, in Greek, two physeis. This new terminology was not accepted by people who feared that, that this would imply a separation of the divinity and humanity in Christ. At Chalcedon, they also said that these two natures were in one person, which prevents any idea of separation. This is why it is so important, even today, that the Eastern Orthodox or Chalcedonians would also say and, and repeat that they believe in two natures, not only that in two natures, but in one person in Christ. Otherwise, we can perpetuate the misunderstanding if we, if we speak only of two natures. As for, non, as for the non-Chalcedonians, they wanted to remain faithful to Cyril of Alexandria, whose formula in Greek is mia physis to theu logu sesarkomeni, meaning one physis, and I like to keep this word physis, so I repeat, one physis incarnate of God the Word. And here you can understand that when you speak of God, the word, you speak of the divinity of Christ. And when you speak of, in, when you say incarnate, you speak of the humanity of Christ. So you have to understand properly this formula. But this formulation, miaphysis, was wrongly understood as monophysis, mm. which makes a huge difference. Miaphysis should be understood as a composite nature, including divinity and humanity in Christ. And uh, of course, uh, these two formulations should be given with all their words, as I said before, and not cut, uh, keeping only the words miaphysis or two natures. Otherwise, uh, they will be misinterpreted. Thus, both formulations of Cyril and of Chalcedon can be accepted if they are well understood and explained. This was said and done during the unofficial and official bilateral dialogues. What is essential in the dialogue today 
is to understand that Saint Cyril, Saint Cyril is also a church father for the Chalcedonians, as his name is present in the Synaxarium, that is the book of the lives of the saints. And his writings are studied in the Eastern Orthodox faculties and quoted by Orthodox theologians until today. On the other side, the four adverbs used at Chalcedon, that is, without confusion, without change, without separation, and without division, these four adverbs balance and clarify everything. And they can also be found in liturgical and other texts of the non-Chalcedonian churches. All these elements prevent from lapsing into Ill illegitimate extremes and are a common ground for reconciliation. So your thoughts on what Christine uh, Cheo just shared and also you could help us to understand the terms um, monophysitism, eophysitism, diaphysitism, and others. I'd like to share a story that Father George Dragas shared with us in class once. Originally. And Father George, just for the listening audience, is? Father George Dragas is a, a proto-presbyter, an archpriest, in the Greek Orthodox Church. Okay. And if memory serves correctly, he's still in the United States. Yes, yes. He I is. think he teaches now a class in the Coptic Seminary in L.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that would be yeah. in keeping with yeah. who Father George is yeah. in terms of his, of his love. Um, Father George was giving us a class on uh, ecclesiology at... Uh, uh, Orthodox uh, study, which was uh, it was a program that was run by the Eastern Orthodox. It was an Eastern Orthodox program, and um, in speaking about the beginnings of the dialogues that uh, Madame Christine Chaillot is referencing, he says that we went to the WCC with zero hope. Hmm. He's speaking of himself and Father John Romanides, another priest from from the Greek Orthodox communion. And uh, they had no hope. It was, uh, it, was, uh, it was one of these things where uh, we're all gonna pretend to be nice together, say a few things, diplomatic, and go back. Kumbaya. And, Kumbaya, <laughs> exactly. Well what, is, what is WCC? The World Council of Churches, sorry. Hmm. And uh, he says, we were awestruck if, um, I'm, you know, I'm very loosely paraphrasing here, mm -hmm. you know, just from memory. But he goes, we were in shock when we discovered uh, these people who, and these, by these people he means uh, us. The Oriental. The, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, yeah. Um, the Orthodox tradition of the three councils, <laughs> <laughs> however you want to put it. Uh, it was, we were, you, what do you mean? You don't, you, you, you don't honor Eutyches? Mm. You don't, you don't. Uh, you, you don't believe that Christ is uh, a divinity, uh, a, a divine nature that swallowed up the humanity? Uh, uh, you believe he is fully human and fully divine? And when we started, and then this and this uh, took on b b bigger, bigger uh, uh, ramifications, larger ramifications, when they started talking about the shape of the liturgy. Mm -hmm. And the fasting, and how, and 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 the asceticism of the church, and especially Father John Romanidis was very, very, very intrigued by the fact that our tradition kept alive noetic prayer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the tradition of noetic prayer, and uh, and this and this caused everything to explode for them in terms of looking things up, telling other people. They were very, very excited mm -hmm. uh, because. There was a he. What he said, he, he didn't say a, a shared experience. He said we could smell the likeness in each other, and uh, that's beautiful. I just wanted to add that to the, you know, as a reaction of some things that mm -hmm. Madame Chaillot had uh, had mentioned. 
We're going to catch a clip in a little bit. Um, I don't remember if it was Madam Sheo or uh, Dr. Butnif, but one of the two of them said, you know, we, we went to the WCC and um, we've entered into these dialogues and now we've come back to our churches and the response was like, uh-oh, what do we do now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we actually, surprisingly we weren't ready for yeah. this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's so refreshing. It's so refreshing to see those people that are open-minded, that are humble, you know, seeking unity because it's the only right thing to do, again, based on proper theology. Um, and I mean, I mean, the one thing that, 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 that is uh, of great importance for me is, is the idea of the fifth council that the Eastern Orthodox have and, and you know, like Canon 8 and, and that comes from that council that, that clearly speaks about Miaphysis as being an acceptable expression in terms of Christology. And if we know anything about church, um, hierarchy or, or, or authority, we know that the councils, especially the ecumenical ones, are the ones that hold the uh, heaviest weight, right? So so from their perspective, having this as an ecumenical council that says this, and it's right there, that's what you believe in. Yet at the same time, you claim that this expression is incorrect be and because we don't say it the same way you say it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, on, on, honestly, it's a, it's a head scratcher for me. But again, I'm so happy and I'm so refreshed by people like Christine Chaillot, may God keep her. And I hope that others adopt that type of behavior. So, so for, the, for the sake of the listener, can we distinguish between the terms? Yeah. Because for, for some folks, this might be unfamiliar territory for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when, when we speak about um, a person who is monophysite or has fallen into the heresy of monophysitism, we're basically referencing Eutyches. Eutyches, who was an archmitted writer in Constantinople and who made the mistake of assuming that what happened in Christ is that the divinity, when it came into the presence of the humanity of Christ, basically swallowed it up because the humanity could not stand in the presence of the divinity and somehow that translated into... Um, it swallowed it up, it assumed it, and now there is only one real nature in the person of Jesus Christ. And to be clear, both families, Chalcedonian and non-Chalcedonian, condemn monophysitism. Mm. Um, in light of that, the- And Eutychus. Absolutely, and Eutychus is seen as a heretic, mm -hmm. and even an arch-heretic, uh, because of the introduction of this very specific heresy. Now, some people, and I think, again, Father John makes the mistake of implying implicitly accusing us of basically saying okay they're gonna they're gonna say they're not monophysite they're actually miaphysite in reality it's gonna sound like we're all the same but we're really not so i, I would just want to deviate from the conversation for just a second and i would encourage everyone who's listening please don't do that don't tell somebody what they believe mm. if you want to know what a group of believers genuinely believe ask them don't sit there and tell them what they believe. Like Father just gave a beautiful example of how it is that um, Father George Dragas and Father Romanides, when they went there and actually dialogued and asked, hold on, you genuinely believe this? Can you explain? They were shocked at what they heard. Mm. But there is this unfortunate reality that exists where people already have um, a preconditioned idea of what it is that the other family believes. And in so doing, they condemn them without ever dialoguing with them. Open our books. See for yourself our, in, our, our, our understanding uh, of what the liturgy is, or what our Christology is, how it is that we build our Christology on the forefather who defended the faith in Ephesus, St. Cyril of Alexandria. Miaphysis was not a term that we created when our backs were up against the wall in Chalcedon. This is the terminology that was handed down to us in Alexandria. Remember, the Coptic Orthodox Church is Alexandrian. We are the children of Cyril. And when we receive this teaching, we maintained it as faithfully as we possibly could. So what does it mean to say that we are miaphysite and not monophysite? And, and Father, please jump in here because I know you're going to be able to express this better than I can. But St. Cyril, the way he explains it very clearly is there is both the Godhead and humanity, very clearly, both natures, in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, but they are united 
in a way that is ineffable, completely mysterious, and unseparable. And so because in him they are one, he then describes this as Mia feces. He is not suggesting that one swallowed the other. There is no such thing. There is no mingling. There is no confusion. There is no alterations. And we continue to use that terminology every single liturgy we pray. So daily, the Coptic Orthodox Church confesses that we believe that his humanity was united to his divinity without mingling, without confusion, and without alteration. This is drastically different from the heresy of um, of Eutyches.